I hope you're having a great day today. This is the day the Lord hath made as every day, and therefore we should rejoice and be glad in it, for God has and is and will do great things. Hey, what do you do in the midst of storms? What, what, what do you do? Actions in the midst of storms. Now, I'm sharing with you a portion of the message that I'll be sharing in the church today. And I hope that just what I give you today is going to help you. And by the way, speaking of church, I'd like to see you sometime. We're located at 1501 Central Drive in Kannapolis, and our service is 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Come by and see us sometime. What do we do then in the time when storms rage around us? Well, the first and foremost thing is you got to believe and know that God is in control and that He is a God of His Word. Numbers 23 verse 19 says that God is a God who cannot lie. He will not lie. And he also is a person who holds to his principles and honors his promises. Hallelujah. I believe that when Daniel uh, was put into the lion's den under the order of King Darius, that when he was going in there, King Darius said, Oh, Daniel, I I trust that the God in whom you've served continually will deliver you. And you know, I believe that word held, anchored, encouraged Daniel the whole time. Because I believe it echoed in his mind over and over again, God will deliver me. You know, so many times we think, hey, I'm a child of God. And nothing can go wrong. It kind of reminds me of that movie, Westworld. A perfect world where nothing can go wrong. Go wrong. Go wrong. <laughs> well, it's the same way if you have the notion that everything is going to go great all the time with you because you're a child of God. Wow. You got another thing coming. Do you think that coronavirus that we're having to deal with is a respecter of persons? It sure isn't. Just because you're a child of God doesn't mean that the virus is going to skip over you. No, we're all subject to it because the Bible says it rains upon the just and the unjust. When it rains, it doesn't just rain on the Christian's gardens. It rains on the unjust gardens as well. So it rains upon the just and the unjust. And, and Jesus said in John 16, 33, do not fear. He said, because in this world, you're gonna have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer in the midst of tribulation. Come on, Jesus. But he's right. Because he said, I've overcome the world. And because he is an overcomer, he makes us an overcomer as well. Because greater is He that's within me than the trouble that's in this world. In the storms, I believe that we can, we can feel somewhat like Paul did in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, I believe Paul was a man who was probably more knowledgeable concerning the things of God than anybody in history or anybody that ever will be. And yet Paul said, we are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not despaired. And we're persecuted, but not abandoned. And we're struck down, but we are not destroyed. Wow. You know, the disciples, when they were on the ship, Jesus was with them. And you'd think, well, if Jesus is with me, hallelujah, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna harm me. I'm not gonna have any storms. But Jesus, in the midst of the disciples, a storm came anyway. And the disciples feared for their life. They thought, what are we gonna do? Hey, Jesus, what are we gonna do? 
And of course, Jesus spoke to the storm and the storm was, was sealed. Now, as long as the disciples focused on the storm, they were full of fear. Now, if they kept their eyes there, they're going to live in fear. But if they cast their eyes upon Jesus and understand who he is and what he can do and how much he loves us, then we're going to realize that even in the midst of the storm, we're going to be okay. They had confidence and they had assurance that built up in their life. Peter, another guy who was out on a boat with the disciples and uh, it had to be dark. And in the midst of that darkness comes a storm. I mean, it's one that they feared for their life. And in fact, when Jesus came walking on the water to where they were, Jesus had to say, don't fear, it is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter looked at Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, that's you. Let me come out there where you are. And Jesus said, come on. And Peter got out of the boat and he did walk on the water. And he was doing pretty good until he felt a strong wind which got his attention and he turned and I can just see him looking at a wave thinking, oh man, I'm going under and under he went. Why? Because he got his eyes off of Jesus. Now, Jesus is the promise. And he got his eyes off of Jesus, and as a result of that, well, he began to sink. I believe if, if you take a promise of the Word of God, and Jesus, again, is our promise, and stand upon him, and stand upon that solid rock, stand upon the promises of God, I believe you're going to come out all right. When I was in college, I was studying for exams and I, I got the worst case of the flu I think I'd ever felt in my life before or since. And I couldn't hardly hold my head up. And I was thinking, God, I gotta study. Exams are tomorrow, please, God, I gotta study. But I was so sick, I couldn't even pray good. So I got the Bible and I laid it down on the floor and I thought, God, I am literally going to stand on this word. And I put both feet on there and I stood. And again, I couldn't pray. All I could just say was, I'm standing on your word by your stripes I'm healed. And then I went to bed. I must have, I, I dozed off. But when I woke up, I was totally healed. There was not a remnant of the flu left in my body at all. I was as strong as I've never had the flu at all. God healed my body, standing upon his word. Now, I got to tell you that if I had a, if I, if I woke up and I was still sick and I had to be hospitalized at that time, I would have still believed God. I would have still believed his word because his word never fails. You see, I don't have faith in just what God can do. I have faith in who God is. And that's the big deal. Faith in what he can do. And what if he doesn't do? Well, then I don't have faith anymore. But he's always who he is. He changes not. He is my savior. He is my healer. He is my provider. He's my help in the time of trouble. And no enemy can ever change that truth. So what do we do when we are faced with a, a, a storm or a trouble in our life? Well, believe in God and stand on his word. And whatever fear the enemy seeks to try to bring you under, well, believe the opposite because the devil's a liar. I mean, if there's a lump that comes upon your body and you say, uh oh, the devil says it's cancer and you're going to die. Well, hey, God is the final authority. So you look to him and say, Lord, you're my healer. And I'm going to believe the very opposite of what the devil is saying. So rather than fear, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to praise you. And keep trusting God. Don't waver no matter what 
Don't waver. Remember Jesus when he was tempted. He said, it is written. And I believe what's going to keep you steadfast, unmovable, is the word. And you quote the word and say, it is written. And then give the scripture you're standing upon. And quote that promise. Quote it out loud. And watch what you say by way of negative. You know, there's some people that they can't talk unless they tell you something negative. But God says, my truth is what sets you free. So therefore, speak the truth. Negative talk will not set you free. It'll keep you in bondage. So therefore, speak the truth and speak it out loud. God is for you. And if he's for you, who can be against you? When storms come, then speak to it in the name of Jesus. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. And see what God does. He's still in the storm, stilling peace business today. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a song that goes along with that. I miss my grandboy today, but this song is an old song, but it's got a great truth. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must try. I'll have no for Jesus walks beside me For I'm sheltered in the arms of God So let the storms rage high The dark clouds rise They won't worry me For I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and naught of earth shall harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portals. Come home, my child. This is the last mile you'll have to trot. I'll fall asleep, oh, but I'll wake in God's new heaven. Sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me. And not of earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Yes, we're sheltered in the arms of God.